Now, before looking at some cases, I want to highlight a point that David Hand makes early in his book that is rarely made in these discussions and that I think is important. It's the point that the basic intuition that unlikely events are rare is a sound intuition. In fact, if the events become sufficiently unlikely, it's reasonable to judge that you should never see these events. Emile Borel, a 19th century French mathematician, called this the single law of chance, but nowadays it's just called Borel's law. And it states that events with a sufficiently small probability never occur. Now, this seems at odds with the gist of the previous discussion, which is that events that are very unlikely may often occur. It may also be at odds with another thought you may have, which is that this overstates the case. The more correct reading is that if an event is sufficiently unlikely, then it can and may occur, but only very rarely. To say that it can never occur seems too strong. But what Borel is getting at is a bit more subtle than this. When he says sufficiently unlikely events never occur, what he means is that the event is, and here are his words, so unlikely that no sensible person will hesitate to declare it actually impossible. If someone affirmed having observed such an event, we would be sure that he is deceiving us, or has himself been the victim of fraud. Unquote. What Borel is doing, in other words, is defining the concept of a sufficiently unlikely event relative to human scales, and making a claim about what is reasonable to believe at those scales. In human terms, the probability is so small that it would be irrational to expect ever to see it happen. So, for all practical purposes, it should be regarded as impossible. If someone says they observed such an event, it would be rational to say, no, you didn't. I think you're mistaken about that. Now, what sorts of events fall under this description? Borel thinks that on human scales, events that happen less than one in a million times are, for practical purposes, impossible. But of course, this is all a matter of degree. The odds of being dealt a royal flush in poker, for example, are about 1 in 650,000. So Borel would say this is a rare event for sure, but it's not the sort of thing you should dismiss as impossible. Here's a better example that David Hand gives. There are about 30 million seconds in a year, so if you and I each randomly pick one second over the course of a year in which to do something, the chance that you and I would pick the same second is so low that we can treat that event as impossible for practical purposes. You can think of even more unlikely examples. This one is cosmically unlikely. What are the odds that all the molecules of air in your living room will spontaneously, by pure chance, begin to move in the same direction towards the corner of the room, bunching up in the corner and leaving a vacuum in the remainder of the room? This is outrageously unlikely. You could wait many times the age of the universe, and you wouldn't expect to see this happen. The probability is not zero, but for all practical purposes, any rational person would treat it as zero. So this is Borel's Law. You can think of it as a principle for thinking critically about very unlikely events. It tells us that, all other things being equal, we should be suspicious of claims that, that an extremely unlikely event has been observed. But if it's clear that such an event has been observed, then this is reason to think that all of the things are not, in fact, equal. And what that means is that one or more of the background assumptions that we reviewed earlier is probably false. Maybe the event we're seeing is the result of an incredible number of independent trials, not just one trial. Or maybe a selection bias is in play, and we're selecting an event after the fact, and so on. In other words, there are factors in play that can explain why the event we're observing really isn't as unlikely as we thought it was.